Have you ever had road rage? I have. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> What's up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. Brand new A24 TV show. So knowing that got me really excited. I like the cast, and I think the premise is interesting. Let's talk about it. Beef. Why is the beef? Mmm. Follows the aftermath of a road rage incident between two strangers. Danny Cho, a failing contractor with a chip on his shoulder, goes head-to-head -head with Amy Lau, a self-made entrepreneur with a picturesque life. The increasing stakes of their feud unravel with their lives and relationships in this darkly comedic and deeply moving series. Ali Wong stars as Amy, and Steven Yeun stars as Danny. Those are our two main characters. That premise and trailer got me excited. And of course, this show is rated TV mature. For all of the standard mature things we expect from a TV show like this, sex and nudity and uh, not really violence, but people wanting to commit violent acts. And it all starts with a simple day. By the way, I want to pause. We moved Airbnb, so sorry about the different background. It looks like an elementary school classroom. <laughs> what can I do, man? I... So like I said, two main characters here. The goal as a viewer watching this, I want some redemption because it starts out on a very difficult note. It starts out with a with a bout of a road rage between both individuals. Something happens and it makes both kind of, um, well, it, well, it pisses them off. Piss me off. I'm not going to sit here and judge. I go to screenings in Ohio. I know what road rage looks like from my perspective, but uh, seeing this happen in the first episode, you expect a bit of redemption from both characters and both sides, but this is the type of show that's not going to provide immediate redemption. This is the type of show where you have to be in it with the characters to see growth, but you also have to be on board for this very darkly comedic series of events that spawns from this one angry encounter. They go to great lengths to get under the other person's skin. They're making relationships with close friends and lovers. They're finding their way into each other's houses. They're getting their address. They're going to different states. It's a series of events that frankly uh, was kind of shocking at points, but also extremely entertaining. And you're seeing two lives that are somewhat spiraling out of control and you're trying to hold out hope for both because frankly there are parts in this series where both characters are just extremely unlikable. You're not rooting for them until you get a moment or two of of conviction, but also a chance to show some emotion from both. I believe Danny gets his due a bit earlier. His contracting business is failing. His relationship with his younger brother is strained, and his life is frankly spiraling out of control. There's a great moment in the first few episodes where he's sitting in church, and he's just kind of breaking down emotionally. You can see all of this building up inside, uh, but for some reason, he just doesn't learn. He continues to do it. He feels... Uh, condescending towards the people in his life that have a reason for being there and his focus on revenge and it points his soul focus it's kind of sucking the happiness from the other parts of his life whether that be the relationships or kind of where he finds he needs to be and that becomes I mean it's a clouded perspective and it's all created from one event at the beginning and you can feel this realism coming because it feels like somebody people I know <laughs> I'm not, gonna, I'm not naming names in case you're watching. <laughs> Boo! Then you have Ali Wong's character, kind of the opposite, and Danny is not as successful, some failures all the way around, but Amy is on the other side of it. She is very successful. She spends a lot of her time building her business up, herself up, uh, the way that people look at her up, but is she truly happy, or are there lies that are coming from her to the other people in her life that she supposedly loves, including the man that she is with and her child. Now, that's something that I found interesting, especially with her character, somebody who is a bit, uh, maybe even more unlikable than Danny at the beginning. Lots of things that happen. There's a moment where she goes to Vegas and she gets to have a deep and intimate conversation where the tide started to turn on her character. I'm like, okay, not only is this really good dialogue, you're developing her, uh, but it also provides a nice connection between the two sides of the story and that storyline is something that continues on throughout so there were some really nice scenes in this show and it's the type of show that you watch you get a little bit of that humor you're watching this dark comedy you're expecting it to be just this constant back and forth this bickering if you will and that is kind of what it is but in that way, I, I was enjoying my time. It's a very different type of show. It's stylistic, A24. You know what they bring to the table. But again, I was just trying to figure out where can I find some redemption, but also where is this story going? 
10 episodes, only 30 minute episodes, but it's this slow building culmination to this finale. And once we get that finale, it's a very different style than the other episodes. I, I'm uh, not sure where everyone's going to fall on the finale, but I found it to be interesting. And I found the way that everything came to a head and we're finally starting to get a little bit of what I was searching for throughout the series. And that is character growth. It takes a while to get there, but once we get it, I felt kind of satisfied, and this is also a show where you just kind of appreciate the writing. You appreciate the characters that are being introduced, right? Our main two characters, they're not growing as much as you need them to, but those around them are interesting, taking them in different directions, and providing some nice back and forth. I think the dialogue in this, again, it's a really well-written show. This comes just from the writer of Dave, Tuca, and Birdie, uh, Two Broke Girls, so... I'm watching this, and I'm really digging the performances, whether they're likable or unlikable characters, but I'm also enamored by the dialogue. It's genuinely good, and uh, it keeps you invested all the way through. I think my other biggest complaint is the fact that we would trail off at times, like I said, 30-minute episodes, so you expect it to move fairly quickly, but it doesn't make for the best binge. That was a mistake on my part. There's a lot to soak in, and there are a lot of storylines. Every now and then, you'll get something with characters to where it feels like they could have moved on to the next entire integral plot point. I don't think this is going to be for everyone. A show like this that is definitely artistic, it takes its time, not everyone's going to dig the dark humor, but uh, if this is for you, and if you love A24, then I think this will be for you. It takes notes from things that we've seen before in a good way, and again, the performances are great. So before I give you guys my score and let you know, is this Netflix show worth a binge? Let me know in the comments down below, what's the best show you've seen all year, and what's the best A24 project you've seen lately. Also, dropping this Beef Netflix series review a thumbs up would be great. This is a well-written dark comedy that focuses on trauma and anger, yet viewers will find the joy meant to be felt from these scenarios. It feels distinctly different from anything else on the platform right now, and it's one of the more uh, fascinating shows that I've reviewed in quite some time, so those are my thoughts on Beef. Uh, is this show for you? It's not going to be for everyone, but I'm fascinated to see if you responded to it, if you enjoyed it, and which performance you liked the most. I am a sucker for Steven Yeun. I thought it was great. Thanks for watching. See you soon.